Before I do start this video, make sure to use my TCG player affiliate down below if you're looking for any of these singles that I talk about today. Also, this channel is sponsored by Arcane Fortress. If you're looking for the best deck boxes around, make sure to use my link down below in the description to check them out. One other way you can support the channel is by becoming a patron. There are some great benefits of being a patron to the channel, such as giveaways, deck advice, and more when you do join. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Dove, and coming back at you with another video today on Pub Stomp MTG, and in this video today, I'll be discussing some of the spoilers that were given to us today for Modern Horizons 3, and I'm absolutely excited for this set. This is one of my most anticipated sets of the entire year, mainly because Eldrazi and all these powerful cards are coming to the format, and I can't be any more excited. So just to kind of give you an overview of this video, I wanted to just discuss some of the new cards that were posted today by Wizards of the Coast. I feel like it's kind of old news now with all the leaks and they've already been discussed, so I'm not going to try to beat a dead horse with that specifically, but I did want to talk about the new cards today. And there's an error fetching up all the cards on the website, but on Reddit they have a lot of the cards posted on there, so I'm going to jump over to Reddit. Alright, so let's first read Feel Like Zuber and Shepherd. So this is a very adorable card. It looks like the necklace kind of matches its eyes in a way, or vice versa, and a very adorable cor uh, corgi just dancing around in the leaves. So let's first read what it does. So for one and a white, it's a legendary creature dog. It does have flash. And whenever it does attack, exile up to one another non-land permanent. At the beginning of the next end step, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If it entered the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Fila. So immediately, I first thought about this could work offensively and defensively for you. Say, for example, when you do attack with Fila, you could exile an opponent's token. Or if they have like a big giant hydro with a lot of plus one plus one counters on it, you can essentially just have it return to the battlefield as a zero zero and the token won't actually return to the battlefield. So it's very nice about this effect uh, is the fact that you could use this almost as removal and if you need to attack to reuse a ETB ability, you could easily do so with Fila. And I did also want to mention uh, the profile art. I'm not a big fan of profiles in general, but this one is very cute and adorable and I feel like I had to give this one a mention. Next up is Kudo, King Among Bears. So this is a Selesnya commander for a green and a white. It's a legendary creature bear. Other creatures have base power and toughness 2-2 two, two, and are bears in addition to their other types. So that does include your creatures and your opponent's creatures too. So it's basically like survival of the fittest when you do swing in everybody's going to be having 2-2s. Two, that does include their big giant Eldrazi or their little 1-1s. One, They're all going to be 2-2s two, and of course if you do have counters on your creatures they're going to be exponentially bigger than your opponent's creatures unless they have counters on them themselves. This almost in a way acts as humility besides the fact that uh, you're not getting rid of any kind of effects on your opponent's creatures or your own creatures. They still have activated abilities, ETB abilities. But I do think this is pretty cool. Everything's bears and of course that art, how chonky this boy is, is absolutely insane. And I want to say this is a reference, maybe this is like the husband in a way to Ayula, Queen Among Bears. Uh, let's look at the other arts. So, oh my gosh, it just looks like a side bear one. They're just like standing like this. <laughs> so that's a very cool uh, side profile art. I would say they've done a better job as far as these past two pictures that I've seen with the profile arts instead. They got the etched version and they also do have the old border version. So that kind of gives me a sense that they're going to be printing a lot of different versions of these. So these could be potentially cheap. Up next is Ugin's Labyrinth. And I'm kind of scared about this because of course this does mean we're probably going to have a Eldra land because Ugin's means something like that. So it does have imprint when Ugin's Labyrinth enters the battlefield you may exile a colorless card with mana value 7 or greater from your hand. Okay we're already off to a good start. You can tap it to add a colorless mana if a card is exiled with Ugin's Labyrinth add 2 mana instead. And it also does have another tap ability, return the exiled card to its owner's hand. Okay, so it has a way to just return it. I kind of wish it didn't so that it had some kind of effect to get 2 mana but this is extremely powerful, especially in those Eldrazi decks or those big, like, splashy decks that you can't be playing. Because it doesn't say exile an Eldrazi with 7 mana value or greater from your hand. So this could be pretty powerful in that aspect. I feel like this is definitely going to be one that's going to be played a lot by a lot of different people. But we have this art. We also do have the original art. And I think it's very cool in the aspect that it looks like Greek, uh, like the labyrinth over in uh, Greek mythology. And of course, it's kind of wrapping around the whole entire area with the Hedrons. That's super cool art, by the way. Speaking of Eldrazi, I 
Don't know if I'm going to pronounce this name correctly. Hairgast Erupting Null Kite. This looks insane. Uh, I mean, this is just first look, and I'm just speaking about the art alone because with the little webs around it, it looks like uh, Emrakul Spawn almost in a way. But let's read what it does. So for nine, and it does have a merge cost for six and two red. When you cast a spell, you may exile your hand. If you do, you draw three cards. So this is going to be very good, especially if you don't have any cards in your hand. You don't have to worry about exiling anything. It also does have flying in each creature spell you cast has emerged. The emerge cost is equal to its mana cost. Wow, that could be really powerful in a lot of different aspects, especially if you are playing those colorless Eldrazi. But you can almost reduce the cost to zero because if you are casting an Eldrazi card, it's just going to be equal to its mana cost. It's not going to have to worry about other color pips. So if you do have an Eldrazi on the battlefield, and for example, if it had a mana cost of 10, you could easily cast an Ulamog for that 10 for free, basically, if you do sacrifice it. So then that way, it's extremely powerful. Hairgast is going to be one interesting commander in the future for sure. And let's look at the other arts. So it looks like, okay, that's a sweet profile treatment. I... I was kind of apprehensive on profile treatments coming back, but this one is pretty sweet. But if I am playing Eldrazi, I'd prefer having the etched version because I just love the metallic look of it, especially them being colorless. So this is going to be a very cool treatment. I'm definitely going to be picking up. All right, so following that, we do have Winter Moon. So this is very reminiscent to uh, Winter Orb, essentially has that effect of players can untap more than one non-basic land during their untap steps. And all for two mana. I like this a lot better than the previous iteration, mainly because it's non-basic land. So you you can really punish those who have been going very greedy in their mana bases. This is definitely better in those monocolor or even two color decks. Planar Nexus is next, so it looks like this is going to be in the commander deck, so it is every non-basic land type, so that does include Cave, Desert, Gate, Lair, Locust, Mine, Power Plant, Sphere, Lo uh, Tower, and Urzas. So you can tap for our colors mana, and you can pay one, tap it, and add one mana of any color. Of course, with the new deserts that were previously in uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction, that's going to be very good. But I did notice it doesn't say snow on there. Does it say snow? No, it doesn't say snow on there. That's weird. All right, so next up is March of Velis Vale. So for two and a blue, it's a sorcery. Choose a non-basic land type. Each land you control of that type becomes a copy of target creature you control until end of turn and gains haste until end of turn. It does have flashback four and a blue. So of course, if you are playing a landfall deck and you have so much lands on the battlefield and you just go ahead, you could just copy Avenger of Zendikar, put a land on the battlefield, and then just kill a hand from there. Um, maybe that's what you'll do with all those plans tokens but that's the first thing that i thought about with this example i don't know how i feel i mean it depends on how much land you do have on the battlefield i mean of course you could just swing in with it because it does gain haste so this one's just first evaluation this is going to be in the commander set because of that icon too it looks like it's going to be in that simic color combination deck for sure all right so following that it looks like we have a reprint with orange chance but now it's going to be reprinted in modern i don't think it's modern legal previously correct me if i'm wrong though so this is a good reprint to add into the list but i will say the new art is absolutely stunning with uh just having the force field going around everywhere uh, absolutely incredible there is also a new urza's land with urza's cave so this is the land in urza's cave uh, is the typing that's can't be any more fitting so let's read what it does so for three and tap it sacrifice urza's cave search your library for a land card okay so this is any land card so this kind of reminds me of what's it called that green instant that sacrifice land crop rotation that's what it is and put it onto the battlefield tap then shuffle but this is on a land and it's colorless. Wow, this is going to be pretty powerful. So following that is Chthonian Nightmare. I'm pretty sure I butchered that name. So for one and a black, this is a play on Reoccurring Nightmare. Uh, there's a lot of horror stories that I've heard with Reoccurring Nightmare. So is this going to be a powered down version? Let's find out. So when it enters the battlefield, you get three energy counters. You can pay X and a energy, sacrifice a creature, return Chthonian Nightmare to its owner's hand, return target creature card with mana value X from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate only as a sorcery. So you have to pay into that energy ability with that pay x ability so if you have a lot of energy you could really dive in and pay for a lot of different things of course you can return uh chthonia nightmare back to your hand and then just replay it back and forth so this one i don't know i mean i would have to compare and contrast to the other card but it does feel very similar i think there's some different wording i need to figure out like what kind of wording is different but i guess the only thing that's very different is the energy counters and the x ability i think it's almost worded very similar uh you probably have to let me know down below in the comments uh how much different is this compared to the other version of course there are some other cool arts this one looks insane uh coming off the border and showing that eye on top it just looks pretty crazy next up is siege gang lieutenant and so this is 
I thought it was Siege Gang Commander, but I guess this is one mana less and you make one less goblin. But at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander... Okay, so that's the difference with this. It's definitely a different play on that. You create two 1-1 one -one red goblin creature tokens. Those uh, tokens gain haste until on a turn. Well, that's pretty powerful in the aspect of if you constantly uh, have your commander out with this, you can just make more and more tokens. And of course, it has that ability to sacrifice a goblin to deal one damage to any target. So this one, I actually like a lot. Uh, I know four mana is kind of steep on this effect, but if you constantly churn through and make a lot of goblins on the battlefield, you could definitely overwhelm your opponents. Next up is Blastoise itself, Kappa Cannoneer, and this one is officially going to modern with the modern symbol. It's not like the commander symbol, so this way it's going straight to modern. A lot of people were speculating this was either going to be in the commander precon deck, but now we have visual confirmation that this is going to be in modern, and this is going to be an absolute powerhouse. This was doing a lot of work in Legacy, so I'm excited to see how this does. And there is also an old border art, which looks pretty sweet, by the way. And this one, a lot of people already know exists because of the leaks. It's Flare of Denial. And so we have visual confirmation that this is an actual spoiler instead of just a leak. So this is another one of those free effects that you can't take advantage of to counter a spell. But in the cost of you have to sacrifice a non-token blue creature rather than pay the spell's mana cost. So we'll see how this does, especially in Commander, because of course I'm more of a Commander-focused channel. I feel like this could see possibly CDH play. I know a lot of people have talked about playing Thassa's Oracle uh, and somebody tries to counter the Demonic Consultation on the stack. But what you can do is just sacrifice the Thassa's Oracle to counter the spell. And you still will have that Thassa's Oracle trigger on the stack and then counter that spell that tried to counter your Demonic Consultation. There are some other cool alternate arts. I don't know who this person is. It looks like Ariette in a way, but not really Ariette. I don't know who it is. We'll see if there's a character that's going for it. I do like the old border. That looks pretty sweet and honestly looks retro enough where it looks like it's actually an old card. Following that is Rite of the Reliquary. So this is a black and a green creature. Uh, Creature, zombie knight it does have vigilance and it does get a plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard and you can also tap it to sacrifice another creature search your library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield tap and then shuffle so i like this effect because it does have vigilance and it does have a tap ability so for example if you swing in you can just sacrifice another creature in response so that's still swinging in for damage and then it'll get buffed up and you get to put a land onto the battlefield so this is some pretty good synergy with itself and we have another play on siege gang commander i thought i was just kind of going crazy with this but it's just basically you make three uh zero one colorless eldrazi spawn creature tokens and you just sacrifice an eldrazi and it deals two damage to any target so those are just a complete play on siege gang commander so absolutely love it meltdown was another one of those cards a lot of people were talking about that was getting reprinted into modern and so obviously we, here we do have it now and old border too so another leaked card that happens to be true that they just posted was null drifters so for seven mana this just basically is a mole drifter but it's a cast ability instead of an etb so this is less good in my opinion uh, it does have flying and annihilator one and it does have evoke uh, two and a, a loop but the fact that this just has uh you when you cast this spell you draw two cards not one of etbs that's just the big downside to this but so i think it's pretty decent especially if you go in a lot of different strategies with eldrazi especially with that new late commander if you copy that ability null elemental blast is another one of those that i feel like can't see a lot of play we'll see what happens with it so it's just a colorless mana and it's just counter target multicolored spell or destroy target multicolored permanent I don't know how much uh, commander play this is going to see outside of Eldrazi decks. I mean, if you can't tap for a colorless mana, I mean, it can be very good, especially against those multicolored decks. There is also the alternate art with the uh, old border, but I, I don't know how to gauge this card. I mean, looking at CDH alone, if you play this in you know, like a maybe like a one or two color deck, I'm thinking about this with a Tali Primal Conqueror, but I'm not 100% sure yet because of the colorless mana. If I don't have colorless mana, I mean, there's a lot of ways to produce it in that deck. I'm just worried that this is not going to do as much as I want it to do. But we'll see what happens there. I mean, this will destroy a Timna. This will destroy a Krom. I'm trying to think of other examples. But it doesn't really uh, neuter any of the main win cons of CDH. For example, Thassa's Oracle Demonic Consultation. Those are both monocolored spells. Underworld Breach, Lion's Eye Diamond, and also Brain Freeze are also monocolored spells. I mean... 
technically with Lion's Eye Diamond, it's a free spell. But uh, in that aspect, I don't know how well Null Elemental Blast is going to do because there's focusing on multicolored spells. It's really going to just disrupt a lot of commanders in uh, the decks. Another leak, uh, neither Goyth, this one was leaked, I want to say, a couple days ago. Um, so this is just a one black mana and it does have escape. But the only difference between this and the other Goyths is the fact that it's among cards in your graveyard, not in anybody's graveyard. And plus, you have to exile any number of other cards from your graveyard with four more uh, card types from among them. So if so, if you have like a uh, like an artifact creature that counts as two, and if you have like an enchantment and a land that will count as four, so that you could just exile uh, those cards to escape this onto the battlefield. I mean, that will hurt you in a way where if you don't have as much cards in your graveyard. Neither Goyf is going to be basically a zero one most of the case if you do exile those cards. But I may be undervaluating this and this is going to be a busted card in modern. We'll see when we get there too. Sylvan Safekeeper, this is just a great way to protect any of your creatures uh, by sacrificing a land. So this is cool that it's getting reprinted. Final Act, basically just a farewell but for black. Uh, choose one or more, destroy all creatures, destroy all planeswalkers, destroy all battles, exile all graveyards. Each opponent loses all counters. So I like this. It's more of a fair version of, uh, at least in my opinion, it's more of a fair version of Farewell in the aspect that you're destroying. I mean, you are exiling all graveyards, which is pretty nice, especially against those graveyard decks. It does have some different effects too, like each opponent loses all counters. I think that's based off of the experience counters that people can get. This is on the Commander Precon product. It's not going to be in Modern. So that is all the spoilers that I'm going to talk about today. Of course, like I mentioned previously at the beginning of the video, I'm not going to discuss all all the leaks because again that's kind of old news now a lot of people already have seen them and discussed with them i'm not going to go into that too much i feel like my favorite card by far but let me know down below in the comment which spoiled card is your favorite i'd love to hear your thoughts make sure to like share and subscribe to the channel with out of the way thank you for stomping by